November the 30th, 2025, 6.23am. Emergency dispatcher Maria Conte receives a call that changes everything she thought she knew about volcanic threats. The caller is panicked and breathless. She says her husband collapsed in the vineyard. He just stopped breathing. No warning, no accident. The air killed him. By 9am, three more calls. By noon, seven. All from the same pattern. People collapsing in low-lying areas around Mount Etna, with no apparent cause except the simple act of breathing. What Maria did not know, what most of Sicily did not know, is that Mount Etna has weaponized the atmosphere. Not with explosive eruptions or flowing lava, but with invisible concentrations of carbon dioxide that turn ordinary air into a suffocation chamber. Scientists mapping these incidents have discovered something unprecedented. Etna's volcanic gas emissions are creating systematic death valleys across eastern Sicily. Areas where carbon dioxide concentrations reach levels that cause immediate unconsciousness and rapid death. No dramatic warning signs, no visible threats, just atmosphere that kills on contact. The discovery emerged from atmospheric monitoring data that revealed gas concentrations 750 times higher than normal air in certain volcanic depressions. These are not temporary eruption events. They are permanent atmospheric anomalies where Mount Etna continuously exhales lethal concentrations of volcanic gases. And here is what is keeping emergency coordinators awake. The zones are expanding. Each seismic event creates new fractures for gas escape. Each volcanic tremor opens additional pathways for death to seep into populated areas. What started as isolated suffocation pockets is becoming a network of atmospheric weapons scattered across Sicily's landscape. Recent monitoring shows toxic gas zones appearing in areas that were safe just months ago. Tourist hiking trails, residential neighborhoods, agricultural valleys where families have lived for generations. Mount Etna is systematically poisoning the air across one of Europe's most visited volcanic regions. So if an active volcano can turn the atmosphere itself into a killing field, and these invisible death zones are spreading across Sicily's most populated areas, how many people are unknowingly breathing poison every day? And what happens when Mount Etna's atmospheric weapon network expands enough to make an entire island uninhabitable? Maria Conte had taken a thousand emergency calls in her career, but nothing like the one that came in at 6.12 a.m. The phone line crackled with the sound of wind and a man's panicked voice cut through. He said she had just fallen. She was walking to the car, she just dropped and he could not wake her up. Maria asked the routine questions, breathing, pulse, injuries, but the answers did not make sense. No wounds, no blood. She was fine, he insisted and then she just collapsed. The caller's voice trembled and he said that now he felt dizzy too. As he spoke, Maria heard something rare behind him. No traffic, no birds, just a hollow silence. She told him to move away from the area, but before she could finish the sentence, she heard a heavy thud on the other end of the line, then nothing. By noon, reports were coming in from across the foothills of Mount Etna. People were passing out in vineyards Hikers found unconscious on trails, pets collapsing in courtyards, and entire flocks of birds dropping from the sky. Every case had the same pattern, no warning, no distress, just sudden collapse. And all from areas where the air should have been safe. Emergency teams assumed a chemical spill. Local police suspected pesticides. Environmental officers blamed illegal dumping. But none of those theories could explain why rescuers themselves were collapsing the moment they walked into certain locations. It was as if invisible pools of something lethal were forming across the countryside. Deadly pockets where a single breath could take a life. And then came the discovery that changed everything. Atmospheric monitors placed in a vineyard outside Nicolosi recorded carbon dioxide concentrations 40 times higher than the lethal threshold for humans. Not in a crater, not near a vent. In a field where families had harvested grapes for generations. 
If these invisible zones were multiplying, if they were spreading into villages, homes, schools, then Sicily wasn't dealing with a local emergency. It was dealing with a continent-scale threat, something ancient, something geological, something that could make entire regions uninhabitable. Because Mount Etna, long known for its lava flows and ash plumes, had begun killing people through the air itself. And the question scientists were now asking was terrifying. Could an entire island, an entire population, be pushed out of existence, not by an eruption, but by the silent rise of volcanic gas? Could Sicily become unlivable, simply because its atmosphere had turned hostile? Mount Etna has dominated Sicily for more than 3,500 years of documented eruptions, shaping civilizations, destroying them and shaping them again. Standing on the tectonic collision point between the African and Eurasian plates, it has erupted more than 130 times in recorded history. Ancient Greek philosophers wrote about it, Roman generals feared it, medieval chroniclers described nights where the island glowed red as if lit by a furnace. But through all its fire and fury, one truth remained constant. Etna was predictable. Its eruptions had patterns. Its gas emissions followed known cycles. Its threats were visible. Until now. For centuries, Etna expelled its volcanic gases, mostly through summit craters and established fractures. These gases were largely harmless once dispersed into the open air. The typical volcanic gas mixture was 90% water vapour, 6% carbon dioxide, 3% sulphur dioxide, and 1% trace gases. Around Etna, carbon dioxide levels in the open atmosphere hovered between 380 and 400 parts per million, safe, normal, and stable. Seasonal winds carried the gases into the Mediterranean, dispersing them like powder into an ocean of air. But volcanic carbon dioxide has a hidden danger. It is heavier than air. It slips downward, sinking into valleys, basements, and enclosed spaces. At concentrations above 7%, it causes unconsciousness within seconds. At 10%, death follows in minutes. And it provides no warning, no smell, no taste, no irritation. You inhale, you collapse, you never wake up. History has seen the deadly potential of concentrated volcanic carbon dioxide. In 1986, Lake Neos in Cameroon released a massive burst of carbon dioxide that rolled down the surrounding valleys and killed 1,746 people in their sleep. In California, Mammoth Mountain has suffered decades of tree deaths because carbon dioxide seeped through the soil, creating invisible toxic zones where even forest animals suffocated. At Horseshoe Lake, three people died inside cabins whose air appeared clean, but was saturated with carbon dioxide pooling at ground level. These were warnings, rare, extreme, but unmistakable. And now, according to the latest data from Sicily, Etna was exhibiting similar patterns, but on a scale no volcano in modern history had ever displayed. In November 2025, atmospheric monitoring teams from the Italian National Institute of Geophysics and volcanology noticed anomalies. Carbon dioxide levels at ground depressions near Etna were spiking. Not slightly, but catastrophically. Dr. Alessandro Ayupa's research group measured pockets reaching 75,000 parts per million. Those levels are instantly lethal to humans. These were not isolated spikes. They began mapping these zones and found 23 separate death valleys scattered across eastern Sicily. The locations weren't random. Global positioning system correlations revealed an alarming pattern. Every new gas pocket aligned with fractures created during Etna's recent seismic bursts. Throughout November, the volcano averaged 15 to 20 small earthquakes per day. Each one, though minor, cracked open new subsurface pathways. These new routes acted like underground highways for carbon dioxide channeling gas into regions far from the summit. Gas emission calculations painted an even darker picture. 
Etna was releasing roughly 15,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide per day, almost double its yearly average. And the fracture network feeding this emissions boom had expanded by more than 340% since January 2025. Entire communities were now at risk. Near Nicolosi, three residents collapsed while tending vineyards. Two survived, one did not. In Padara, carbon dioxide monitors installed in residential basements registered levels 12 times higher than the concentration that causes immediate unconsciousness. Hiking trails near Lingua Glossa revealed a deadly surprise, an 850 metre zone where carbon dioxide pooled above the ground like an invisible river. And in Giare, farmers reported sudden livestock deaths with veterinarians confirming carbon dioxide poisoning as the cause. The spread was not random, it was following terrain. Topographic models revealed gas flowing downhill into valleys, concentrating in low-lying areas where thousands of people lived and worked. Wind studies showed these toxic zones expanding outward at an average of 2.3 kilometers per month. Winter temperature inversions were trapping the gas at ground level for days, then weeks, turning entire neighbourhoods into suffocation traps with no smell, no colour, no warning. Meteorologists reported microclimates forming along Etna's eastern slopes, zones where the gas lingered instead of dispersing. These microclimates overlapped with farms, hiking routes, tourist sites and residential districts. If these invisible death pockets kept expanding, 180,000 Sicilians would find themselves living inside areas where one wrong step one low-lying corner, one badly ventilated room could mean instant collapse. And that was just the human toll. Tourism, one of Sicily's economic lifelines, brought more than 2.7 million visitors each year to Etna's slopes. Few knew that trail depressions, old lava tubes, and cave systems could now hold fatal levels of carbon dioxide. Agricultural workers, more than 15,000 of them, spent their days in exactly the valley systems where gas pooled the fastest. Infrastructure was equally vulnerable. Schools, clinics and hospitals in Catania province sat directly along projected gas drift paths. Underground parking garages and subway tunnels were becoming potential carbon dioxide chambers. Wine cellars, storerooms and basements, once safe spaces, were now capable of killing anyone who entered without detection equipment. Tourist caves and volcanic tour routes had already been declared off limits by researchers, but regional officials refused to enforce closures, fearing mass panic and devastating economic fallout. The economic ripple effects deepened daily. Vineyards in affected zones began reporting crop failures and dead soil. Citrus groves were being abandoned, animal losses mounted. Property values were collapsing. Insurance companies refused to cover damage categorised as volcanic atmospheric events, effectively leaving entire towns uninsured. Scientists warned of a domino scenario. Continued seismic activity would accelerate gas release. Temperature inversions during winter could trap the carbon dioxide for weeks. Subsurface infiltration threatened freshwater supplies. And if gases continued spreading downhill, a mass evacuation of eastern Sicily might become unavoidable. Such an evacuation would trigger economic collapse, not just locally, but across the region. Satellite models suggested Etna's gas plumes could drift across the Mediterranean under certain wind conditions, affecting southern Italy and potentially grounding maritime traffic if gas clouds formed at sea level. Monitoring systems at Stromboli and Volcano showed similar, though less advanced, carb carbon dioxide escape patterns, raising fears that the phenomenon could be part of a broader regional volcanic shift. By early December, sci scientists worldwide were issuing warnings. INGV volcanologist Dr. Boris Benke stated bluntly, we are witnessing volcanic lethality in a completely new form. European Space Agency, ISEAS Agency satellites detected atmospheric distortions from the gas plumes visible from orbit. 
the International Association of Volcanology urged immediate evacuation planning for numerous Sicilian municipalities. NASA atmospheric analysts studying satellite data compared Sicily's gas spread to early stage atmospheric collapse models seen on Mars simulator experiments, an unprecedented comparison for a populated region on Earth. Yet the government response remained inadequate. Italian civil protection admitted they lacked specialized carbon dioxide detection systems for rapid response. Local emergency departments publicly acknowledged they could not predict where the next deadly pocket would appear. Regional officials quietly discouraged public alarm to protect Sicily's tourism-dependent economy. The European Union emergency frameworks, designed for eruptions and ash hazards, were entirely unprepared for what researchers now described as volcanic atmospheric weapons. Time was running out. At current expansion rates, by summer 2026, nearly half of eastern Sicily could fall within active toxic gas zones. Seismic patterns suggested Etna's gas emissions would increase through winter, not decrease. Climate models indicated spring wind reversals could trap gases across the entire island. New chemical analyses revealed Etna's emissions now included higher than normal all traces of sulfur and rare gases, suggesting strengthening magma movement beneath the volcano. Mount Etna had stopped behaving like a traditional geological threat. It had transformed into a silent atmospheric assassin, deploying invisible, undetectable gases that killed not through explosions, explosions or lava, but through breath. Suffocation without warning, collapse without noise, death without a visible cause. The 23 confirmed carbon dioxide death pockets were not anomalies, they were signals. They were the opening stages of an atmospheric crisis, unfolding in real time, expanding daily, slipping into neighborhoods, seeping into farms, drifting into public spaces. Emergency dispatchers like Maria Conte were no longer dealing with accidents or natural disasters. They were receiving the first wave of warnings that Sicily's air itself was turning hostile, that the ground people walked on was exhaling poison that entire communities were living inside a spreading atmospheric minefield. This threat is not about lava, it is not about ash, it is not about eruptions. This is about the air becoming a weapon, one that cannot be outrun, cannot be fought, cannot be negotiated with. The question is no longer if more people will die. The question is how many will suffocate before the world accepts that Mount Etna has weaponized the sky and Sicily is rapidly becoming uninhabitable and the world must decide whether it plans to act or whether it will watch an island slowly lose its breath. This is Earth Attacks, the channel that keeps you informed of the planet's most urgent seismic threats. Join our community today and arm yourself with knowledge of deadly volcanic gases and other incredible dangers lurking beneath our feet.